Hello everyone, this is Mohamed Meligi and in this video we will check together how the NT controller directive works in um, Angular JS. In this video I expect that you already have some familiarity with uh, Angular JS and you know what the uh, NG controller directive is all about. So if you go here and try to go quickly to the documentation, I will search for ng controller usually they put it without dashes or anything in between here we will um, find the documentation that says what you probably know that the ng controller assigns um, an element to a controller function and creates the scope for this element to be associated with the controller so that you can inject it into it and assign properties to it from the controller and have them reflect on the element and its children. What I really aim to from this video um, is two main parts. First thing is to show how to explore this going from the Angular JS homepage into Angular JavaScript source code without any prior knowledge. Second one, which is a little bit secret, is testing this new microphone I have gotten here. Yes. So let's go to GitHub and try to explore the folders. We have Clojure. Um, I know that this is probably how Google does their um, internationalization from their uh, Closure compiler. If you don't know that, it's something we're not sure about. Let's explain. Yeah, doesn't look like much in there. It looks like something combined. Let's go back. CSS, docs, example, um, internationalization stuff, images, some uh, libraries, logs, external scripts, maybe, or something. And here we have the source and the test. Okay, we go to the source, stokes compelling. Now we have O2, ng, ng animate, ng cookies, the different modules that uh, AngularJS have. ng controller sounds like a bit of a cool thing, so I'd expect it to be either in O2 or in ng. Let's check O2. Not much in here, just the injector itself, and the injector is the thing that makes the dependent injection magic work in JavaScript. Let's go back. And let's go to ng. I think it, it would be in the main uh, module. You would agree with me, it's a very fundamental piece of Angular JavaScript, and here I'm talking about ng controller. So yes, we have some directive folder and some filter folder and some um, just global files hanging without any specification. Is it here because it's used by controllers? Doesn't look like it. Anchor scroll, animate, browser, all the things that you are able to inject um, in, in any uh, function that accepts dependency injection. So, um, this might apply to a filter, but it probably wouldn't apply to a directive because you can inject filters, but not directives. So, let's go to the directive folder. And anchor some Boolean attributes thingy. Uh, there are some directives here, but the comment says something about just hint. Okay, it might be here, but let's see. Uh, actually, oh, okay, this seems to be the ng directive itself. Let's go back. And yeah, form stuff. Um, I think it might be here actually. Yeah, here it is. ng controller. Let's go there. And documentation stuff. Um, this is um, how. Google generates the documentation for everything, um, you know, for all the ABI stuff we were looking at. It's all coming from here. And where's good? Give me good. Of course, all of this is good, but it's commented good, so it doesn't really count for me. And, ooh, look, it's quite small. 
If you know how to write a directive, you define a function that returns an object that might have some compile method, something that gets called once before the um, element is, is actually written to the document. The link function, which gets called every time the um, element is added, uh, like uh, after it's added to the document and allows you to add classes and do all sorts of stuff, attach, attach um, events, stuff like that. And also scope, you can set scope to something coming from um, the parent scope or something coming from certain attributes. So you can set it as um, an object, you can set it to inherit from the parent scope. You can set it to true and all true means is like um, creating a new empty object. It means just create new scope for this element um, because of this directive. And then we have controller and it's using this fancy syntax, which means, yeah, the value of this attribute, which is um, ng controller, obviously. So we know how it works. ng controller equals a controller name. Um, let me try to find it in the documentation again. You already know it, I expect. So yeah, ng controller equals some controller name. So just th that says, okay, whatever the value of this attribute, take it in and look for it as the controller name. And then um, we have the priority, which um, Something that not many people who write directives know and most likely you wouldn't really know unless you're writing very complex directives. Um, so the priority controls the order that different um, directives on the same element get called. So um, Google have many directives like ng repeat, like ng if, and um, so many other um, directives that would control how the um, element is rendered. There's lots of, I think, um, ng include and all these sorts of stuff. So um, Google already tries to put the priority between the different directives to um, ensure they get called in the in right way. So that's the one. And what do we learn from this? Um, I think what we learn is that if you really wanted to write your own ng controller directive, it's just very easy. Like you just um, get a controller like uh, to to be equal to the value of um, the element, and that's it. Imagine you 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 would be wondering about how to handle the ng include, how to handle templates, how to handle whatever. It's just a matter of a very simple directive. And even Google, like, see, there's no magic in here, really. Maybe you'll think the value for the priority without knowing all the other priorities for um, the related directives is a bit of magic. But apart from that, no magic at all. Um, I thought this bit was interesting to share with you, might be inspiring and uh, encourage you to read more source codes for the libraries that you use. And um, I hope I um, managed to convince you to do that. Thank you very much and until the next video.